Hello everyone, what I have here for you today is So Long Agile Story Summary. Now just a quick note before we dive in further, I have changed the way how I summarize this story in particular since if you were to follow the flow of the story in game, it would be really confusing so instead I summarized each character that is featured on this story and then move on to the next one. If this works out well, I might consider doing that this way for the rest of the story summary videos and comment down below on what you think about this new format. Now before I begin, I have to tell you a few things just so you guys won't be confused. We will be meeting Ponsirus, Bryophyta, Ceylon, Swire, Bison, Khan, Keller, and a whole lot of sheep. I also need to explain to you the current situation of Shiesta. You know how in Heart of Surging Flame we were investigating the volcano? The one that Cronin denied all evidence about it erupting? This takes place after the timeline, so do keep that in mind. Now, prepare yourself for the most wholesome story of our favorite goat, Aya Fiala, and as well as the character development of Swire and Bison. The story starts with Swire and Snow Sense arrival to Siesta while being followed by some men because her grandfather is so overprotective that he ended up sending a few of his lackeys to ensure Swire's safety. She did not like that, so they ditched the car and they met with Enos. She asked him to catch a ride and lose the people tailing Swire, and at first, Enos was hesitant but as soon as Swar hands him a bunch of money, he immediately agrees. Now who is Enos? Enos is an adopted son of Harley which runs a cafe in Siesta Fashion Street in New Siesta. However, from way back in Heart of Surgery Flame, he was also one of the people who mined obsidian for money. During his mining days however, it wasn't disclosed how but he contracted Oripati. Ceylon knows about this and proposed to him that he can work for Rhodes Island because that way, he can get his oripity in check and at the same time provide for his family. Now we see Bison. Bison is in Siesta for one thing. Establishing a company which is a logistics company called Mountain Dash Logistics. Bison is busy going door to door with business owners who are in the way of the construction project for the soon to be Mountain Dash Logistics. In doing so, he goes in and asks for every business owner's consent to not buy them out but rather relocate them to a place where it doesn't interfere with the construction project. Of course, some are not happy with their proposal and some are more than happy to take it. A person named Costa is one of Bison's business partners and is also doing the same thing. But Costa, being local to Siesta, let's just say that instead of saying no to the proposal, he gets treated a bit harsher than Bison. Now, who is Pon Cyrus? She is a local to Siesta but traveled abroad to intern at a construction company after she graduated. During her time at the company she works in, there was an accident just as her internship was about to end. She got oripathy from the way they misuse an original bomb. It did not show how bad the aftermath is but the company blamed it all on Pon Cyrus. The only job she could find was some small time demolition operations. It gets even worse though. Now that she's infected, she has to buy medical supplies to treat her arithmetic. However, she gets scammed for paying her medical insurance. During her travel towards Siesta, the truck she was in broke down. Luckily, they were in Sargon, which means that there is civilization there. Well, I say civilization more like a tribe really. Inam offered work for Pon Cyrus, in which we learn her given name is Anne Mayer. She told Enam that she needed only to earn enough to travel from Sargon to Siesta, but apparently there are Siesta merchants that trade with Enam and Sargon and that she could have just asked them to take Pon Cyrus with them. And that is the last time we ever see Pon Cyrus. Or is it? Because she now finds herself in Colombia where she is being haggled by a bankrupt merchant that commissioned her to do interior design, saying that it's half-assed or so. Since Pon Cyrus mentioned that the budget she was allocated was not even enough to buy any fancy material that the merchant desires. After the merchant talks down on her talent, she did not need to count the money that was given to her. The stack was so small, all she needed to do was fill it with her hands to tell that she is being underpaid. And it's now the trade fair in Siesta. It's an event where every merchant in the street shows off their latest and greatest to the populace. And we haven't really discussed why Suar is on Siesta. One of the reasons is vacation, but the second reason is to set up her own company in Siesta to become independent from her family. Setting up shop in Siesta will prove to be difficult as Bison is also a competition to Suar. Now of course, there were no underhanded methods done in getting the people to decide which side they will vote for for the bidding. But Suar took note of the city's current state. 
So Swire's idea to bring in customers is to build a water park. Building a water park from the ground up is really expensive, so she needed to improvise. Down the streets of Siesta, there is a fancy hotel that does not get much attention and sparked an idea for Swire. She plans on renting the place and modifying it a little to convert into a water park. The water park plan was a success for Swire, which ended up with her getting 33% of the votes and Bison with 21%, and the rest of the competition hovering on 10%. However, after the officials went away, we learned that all of this was a facade. The two of them are actually in cahoots. While Swire was in the lead for the people's votes, she does not intend to go through her plans but instead plans on investing in Bison's company so that way she will not be bothered on managing a company. However, the Colombian government investigated the two and found out that they are using infected for their workforce. The people who were tailing Suar in the beginning were the ones who reported to Suar's grandfather and he did not like the idea of fortune being generated not under his watch. He is bedridden at this point so the only thing he could do was report it to the authorities. Suar then proceeded to confront his grandfather through a recording saying that ever since she made it to Siesta, she has been tailed by his people and if he is the one behind the snitching then she has already won. She also mentions how that she's not only capable of protecting long men, but changing the way it's currently being maintained, and plans to lead a new generation under her leadership for a better long men. Bison also needed to become independent in order for both of their plans to happen. So he confronted his father and told him about splitting up and establishing a new company called Mountain Com Trade. Now we need to talk about Dolly. Dolly is an entity like Emperor and the Arrow. However, unlike the two of them, Dolly is playful and full of riddles, and not everyone can see Dolly. According to the lore, Dolly is a creature that can only be seen when perceived. Dolly also has a sheep army but it's more complicated than that. Those little black sheep are Dolly's clothes, or to be more specific, they are people who passed away that still has some lingering feelings left for this land. Dolly also met Adele's parents back in the day which Dolly refers to as two old friends of mine. So Dolly is probably helping Adele in her journey right now to investigate her parents' death. One good example with the sheep though is Barbara. Salem's mother is Barbara Doikos, which unfortunately died during Salem's birth. She actually really cared for Siesta despite being Victorian by blood. Barbara wanted to raise Salem and have a good life but was not able to do so. Suddenly, a ship that was wearing a hard hat rushes to Ceylon's chest before resting on its lap to feel Ceylon's heartbeat. Adele was also there when this happened and she was also shocked that Ceylon was able to see the ship. Ceylon was confused on what's currently happening but the ship was most likely to be the lingering spirit of Barbara Doikas, which disappeared shortly after seeing Ceylon is alive and well. If you still remember back in Heart of Surging Flame, Skyfire and Province investigated the volcano and gave it to Adele for assessment. Adele is visiting Siesta since a colleague of her parents called her to help out in Siesta's volcano monitoring. She visited the museum full of the research that her parents left. It was supposed to be given to Adele but ended up on Keller's hand and decided to put it on display for everyone to see. It was a way for the Naumans to show off the fruits of their labor. In one display case, she found the very same protective gear that according to Keller, is the very same gear that they used when researching Mount Una. Keller, by the way, is a researcher gathering data for her thesis and met Adele's parents on one fateful night in a cafe. From there, she went with Adele's parents to help out and also gather materials for her research. We also met Khan, who is also an apprentice for Adele's parents. But Khan has a lingering regret as if feeling guilty towards Adele and for some reason is kinda hostile towards Keller. One day, Adele passed out due to low blood sugar according to Salem, but before that, she had a dream. She was still in siesta but instead of normal people, the people is now replaced with sheeps. From there, she met two sheeps. It doesn't have a name but it's referred to as gentle creature and solemn creature. Surprisingly enough, these two sheeps are able to communicate with Adele, leading her from one place to another. After all of this, the volcano was on the verge of erupting but Keller insisted that the volcano was still not going to erupt for about 2 weeks or so. But then, she noticed that the instruments used to monitor the volcano is giving out incorrect data and they noticed that the device was tampered and Keller was certain that no one is allowed to track in a volcano. 
the culprit? It was none other than Dolly and its clones. The damn sheep is lava surfing as the volcano is now secreting lava out of its crevices. Adele more or less knows who is the one responsible for the mess and managed to fix the device but they were running out of time since they needed to evacuate the area. Khan arrives to the scene to confront Keller because apparently when Adele's parents died, Keller went back to her university and did not even attend to the Nauman's funeral. That did not sit right with Khan so he went and dug deeper on Keller's past and has two documents in his hand as proof against Keller. We already know that Adele's parents, Katya and Magna Nauman, were researchers who specializes in volcanoes. They were outstanding with their research to the point that, that it got the attention of the Lithuanian government, basically reaching out to them to use their research for weapon development. They did not want to be part of the weapon development but they also know that if they won't give the government anything, they will be chasing them down. So. To solve this, they gave some of the results they discovered in hopes that the Latanian government would leave them alone after that. But during Katia, Magna, and Keller's journey to do research in Mount Una, a Latanian officer followed them to convince them into weaponizing their research. Keller offered to talk to the officer while Katia and Magna went ahead to survey the volcano. Unfortunately, the same with the current situation that Adele, Keller, and Khan is in, Mount Una erupted resulting in the death of Katya and Magna Nauman. It's easy to assume why Keller would be appointed as a murderer of Katya and Magna Nauman seeing as she's the only one who survived on this incident. Going back to her university and not attending the Nauman's funeral made her even more suspicious. Why she did that was not revealed in the story but basically the two documents that Khan has against Keller is the military's proposal to the Nauman's named Project Rain Shower. Going back to the current scene, Adele, Keller, and Khan is being bombarded with rocks sliding down from the mountain with the eruption, and Adele could only block so much with her arts. Luckily, Dolly showed up and needed Keller and Khan safely unconsciously. After all that has happened, Keller and Adele met up in the museum to explain everything and also hand over some documents that she wasn't able to give to Adele when she tried to recover her parents' research. As she flips through the old documents one after another, she finds a handwritten letter that reads, The above information comes from the two scientists who are incomparably devoted to science. They spent and gave their whole lives to scientific research, in hopes of using knowledge to protect humanity, seeking a safer and better hope. I hope this will be taken in earnest and this research is used for the right cause. It was then that Ayafiala learns Keller's given name, written in the corner of the letter, Adele Keller. Nearing the end of the story, two ships are talking to each other. It's the gentle creature and solemn creature from Eafiala's dream. These two ships are Katya and Magna Nauman, Adele's Muti and Bati. And that concludes So Long Adele. Man, what a roller coaster of emotions this story was. I still remember the time when the community thought that Aya was dying due to the name of the event So Long Adele, but it turns out it was just a closure to Aya's parents' story. We're safe guys, Aya survived. <laughs> but anyways, uh, this video is shorter than the previous one since I wanted to condense this story as short as possible without leaving any crucial details regarding the story. I hope you have understood the story or at least have an idea on what happened if you have not read this story yourself. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this new format and the, the next video I plan on making is regarding Arknights Enfield which is currently being cooked still. After that, Ideal City Rerun is fast approaching and I, I might not be able to post the story somewhere in the duration that the event is up but I will still making it regardless. Uh, but that's all for me for now. Leave a like, comment, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more future story summaries and shenanigans. But until then, see you guys next time. Peace!